What is going on guys? Welcome back and today whoo, my, have I got a very large base for a diorama. Oh, what have I done? Good God, what have I done? <laughs> so I've just cut out my preamble ramble that went on for another two minutes. We're getting rid of that, we're jumping straight into it. So I've started off this diorama base with an A2 sized picture frame. And to start off with, I'm gonna get rid of that bit of plexi, plasticky, whatever it is, see-through stuff that goes in the front that's replaced the glass. Then I'm gonna struggle to get the back back on because these things never go on nicely. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to move on with the build so to begin with what we're going to be doing is marking out our workspace and work area for that i've flipped it over and i've just drawn a rough outline on to this bit of mdf picture frame backing of my space that i have onto there i've then drawn a quick map of how i want this to look Now we can't forget to prep our frame for later. So we're just gonna mask it all off with quick the magic and ta-da. That was good. I feel like I'm getting better at this editing stuff. <laughs> so anyway, once we've done that, I'm gonna go on to building up my cliff face, as you can see in the top corner there. And for that, I'm gonna be using this um, it's insulation foam. Uh, it was the best stuff I could find at the time. I went around absolutely everywhere. Didn't wanna to have to wait on Amazon or eBay or anything like that once again. And this is left over from my death core of Krieg builds. So waste not, want not. The only thing I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm going to cut it outside because I am still finding things covered in dust from from this installation foam and it can't be good for me i no <laughs> so we're going to take it outside we're going to chop it all up and get it to look like some cliffs uh, let's go <laughs> Whoa, 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 just a moment. I'm going to take a slight moment out of the time from this video just to say two things. First one is, that pile of grey you got, oh, I saw you slaying away and getting rid of some of it. Well done, guys. Well done. Absolutely knocking it out of the park on that one. Second thing, could you just uh, pop down there, just hit that little like button, the subscribes around there somewhere, and also I want you to go down in the comments and tell me your favorite legion or faction and why you like it and any little uh, intricacies or anything that you want to add to why you like it or what's your most favorite part because uh, I'm looking for some diorama ideas. Right, let's get back to it. So one last thing before we start covering this all up with sculptor mold, I'm gonna get some LEDs in there. As I've said previously, I wanna make this as interesting and visually pleasing as possible. So get some flashing lights. I mean, keeps my attention pretty well. So uh, maybe it will keep your attention as well. I don't know, we'll find out when it's all finished, I'm sure. But the plan for these is that they're gonna go inside the drop pod and there'll be more on that when we get to the next video, when we 
finish the star armor off. So you're going to have to wait to see the full plan for these, but I'm sure you can guess what I'm planning. But something that we really don't want to do for the moment is get our LEDs all covered in muck. So as you can see, I've embedded it into the cliff face. I guess that's what we're going to call it now. And then I'm going to wrap it in a spare latex glove because that's probably going to be the best way for me to be able to cover it up without causing any issues for myself later down the line. It's be easily removed and it will keep any moisture out from the sculptor mold and any paint as well. So keeping it happy, keeping it nice, keep it stupid, keep it simple. So now we're going to move on to the sculptor mold. This is the part where we can really let our imagination run wild and start to get that creation going. Now, what I'm showing you here is these are all my little offcuts I've got from sculptor mold. Originally, I was thinking I might be able to use these because they've naturally formed into what I think kind of look like rock faces and uh, potential rocks. So even though you've got bits left afterwards, don't fret, don't fear, those are bits are still usable. I didn't actually end up using any in this build, but I know I've got a nice box of potential rock faces and boulders for when I need them. So let's get on to it, let's get the sculptor mold on and see how this goes. Might have been a bit of an issue that we're about to encounter, but um, eh, what are you going to do? Well, that's your problem right there. You ran out of sculpt mold. <laughs> oh no! What am I gonna do? Uh, I've got a plan. I know who I could watch to help me solve this. Well, first things first, I had to break down the tissue paper quickly and effectively. Oh. I had a stroke. Oh fuck. So panic. The stroke of genius. Ah. I went to find my shredder. Out of money you save on sculpt mold by buying plaster. Oh yeah. 0.3 kilograms of sculpt mold for the same price as 5 ah, kilos. 25 quid plaster. now. And I hope you already own a few bog rolls. Cheap shredder I found. <sighs> Do you know what? Yeah. Geek Gaming Scenics. Let's give that a try. Well, now that nightmare's over, we can uh, finally get on with the build. And also, I did notice there is a definite difference between the quality of the usual sculptor mold that I buy from Amazon and this Geek Gaming Scenics stuff. Uh, I, the me main reason why I went to it and bought these, um, I, I mean, I bought four bags of the sculptor mold, the uh, small bags, because that's all they had in stock. And that's all I could find locally. I couldn't find anything locally. Uh, I went to Hobbycraft, I went down to AFK Games, I went down to a couple of other places and just no one had sculptor mold. Uh, Amazon, none on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> I sort of felt a little bit left out on a limb, so I was like, right, come on, Geek Gaming Scenics, don't let me down. And uh, luckily, they did not. And uh, yeah, as I said, there's definitely uh, an improved quality to the mix that I had with this. So I did the ground forming and pretty much just cracked on with it. When I was doing it, I was trying to keep sort of where I've put out for the path to be and where the slope isn't. I've tried to sort of texturize it to give it like a muddy, churned up effect. So let's crack on and see how this is going to go we're nearing sort of like the point where we're about to start putting paints and start to make this look like the base that we saw at the beginning of this video also i've got a new camera yeah i'm no longer filming i'm totally off of my phone now i no longer edit on my phone i no longer film on my phone i am so excited i'm actually starting to feel like a proper um uh, what's the um, idiot? Um, a person online. Um, the the YouTube person, the human ish. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I tried to make my set look a little bit nicer. Let me know what you think. Do you like the RGB light in the background? Is it too distracting? Let me know. I'll keep it in. I'll get rid of it. It's all an experiment. And this is here for you guys at my pleasure. Because... I enjoy making all this, I enjoy doing the videos, I enjoy making the dioramas, I'm just rambling now. Um, I want them to look good for you guys. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> and uh, let's watch this take some shape. So, believe it or not, I'm not actually going to base coat this. No, what I'm going to be doing is creating some washes using the paints that you see before you. So, I've got German Grey by Vallejo, I've got Basilisk Brown by Army Painter, and then I've got some Eschen Grey from Citadel. And what I'm going to be doing is creating these little washes. So, it's going to be 20% paint, 80% water in these shot glasses. So, we're just going to let gravity create that erosion look that you get from rocks so they've had millions of years of rain and crap falling down on them and well haven't got millions of years in fact i'm taking too long already as it is so we're gonna let gravity help us and put that into our painting kit and yeah just create these washes pop them on paint them on drop them on throw them on splash it on however you like <laughs> So let's get on to the painting and yeah. So just to finish it all up, I've given it a quick dry brush of Administratum Grey just to bring it all together and make it look a little bit more uniformed. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking now. I think it's time to get the flock out of here. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Laugh. So to get the right colour and tone that I want for the grass, I'm going to mix these two bags and create this bag worthy of police suspicion. So... <laughs> For that, I'm going to be just grabbing them both, putting them in this bag, sort of mushing them all together, mixing it all up, putting some Mod Podge down onto the board, and then I'm just going to be start to sprinkle it. I'm going to start sprinkling it. I sort of had one idea, and then I went another way, and the other direction was I just went right. I'm going to cover most of this because, and here's the reasoning and thoughts behind it. Istvan 5, there hadn't been a battle there before, so I imagine it to be a pretty standard sort of wilderness setting. I, we know it's not, well, I don't, I don't know, and I haven't read that or been told that it was an industrious planet, uh, it wasn't a dead planet, so I've taken from my experience of uh, the great British countryside and all its moorlands. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time on Dartmoor, but I've been yeah, to a lot of wet, cold, horrible places across the UK in my life. And from that, I understand that uh, you've got lots of different colours. So you've got uh, the heathers, which are normally like purple, and then you've got yellows, you've got reds. Uh, this whole massive spectrum of colours that you get when you go out into the wild. And you get clumpy grass called elephant grass, and I hate elephant grass because it will snap your ankle. <sighs> God, I hate elephant grass. It sucks. So there's going to be a slight evolution in what we see here. I've started off with one idea and then I've moved on to actually I want more coverage. I want more of this, less of that. Which is why there isn't skulls and vehicles half buried into the ground just yet. Uh, because wh why would there be? <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. It's happening now. We are in the moment. And that is the point of this diorama. 
So to finish up and tie it all together, I'm going to start dropping Vallejo European dust wash all over this. It's going to go all over my cliff side. It's going to go all over the meadow or the mountain path that I've created at the bottom. It's going to go everywhere. I'm also going to use some sepia ink, which I don't think I filmed. I think I forgot to press record for that bit. So, but you yeah, know, bear with me. You you will see it in a moment. Uh, the reason for that is just to give ourselves two different sort of mud tones because that's what we're trying to emanate now. So again, drawing from experience, I live in England. It rains a lot and the topsoil seeps down and you do sort of get this mud run through that i'm trying to imitate here well guys thank you so much for joining me on yet another mini adventure i have really really enjoyed getting through the trials tribulations and all the issues that i had to overcome to get this build to where it is now now this isn't going to be the final build you know there is still one more video to come and for that it's gonna take me a while to get that finished so what i am thinking is i might try and live stream some of the painting or the models let me know what you think on that as well i know i've asked you lots of questions in this one uh trying to get that engagement up get these get these videos seen and yeah try and get everything that i'm doing sort of to the wider audience that is out there because if you've enjoyed it i'm sure you know someone out there that will enjoy it as well so guys i'm going to leave you with the final cinematic shots of the diorama that we've built now that all the paint's dried it's been a few days nearly a week um since <laughs> it was done but you know life gets in the way at the moment and i've got lots of work on like my day job so trying to get this done I'm going to get, try to get it done as quick as possible, but watch this space for live streams and watch this space for the next video. Until then, guys, I will see you in the next one.